Hi, my name is Allison Butler. Welcome to the DevNet Sandbox section at DevNet Create. I'm here to give you all updates on what we've been up to since the last Create. That was like a year and a half ago now, that's crazy. So just to give you an idea of some of the stuff that's been going on, um, we moved. Um, we've got a whole bunch of new sandboxes for you all to play around in. Um, I'm also going to do a feature on a couple of those sandboxes. And for anybody who's new to Sandbox, I will show you all how to get started. So my name is Allison Butler. I've been on the Sandbox team for about a year and a half now. Um, my background is in software engineering. So I do a lot of new development work, um, as well as infrastructure automation. I manage a bunch of our open source applications, REST APIs, and that kind of thing. Um, my favorite color is purple, so I was really excited when I got this slide deck that's like all purple. Um, and my favorite animal is cat. So probably the biggest thing that we've been up to in the past year is that we moved. Don't worry, you can still find all of your favorite sandboxes at developer.cisco.com slash sandbox. But all of the cool technology that powers the sandbox has been moved to a brand new data center. This was a really awesome opportunity for us to practice what we preach. We've implemented a whole bunch of different infrastructure and network as code things. Um, so we've got NSO and NetBox powering most of our network. We've moved to Kubernetes for a lot of our applications managed by Cisco Container Platform. Um, we have WebEx Teams bots that monitor, that monitor and alert us um, on issues on a bunch of our infrastructure problems. And any issues we have with services or anything like that. We have Teams bots. Um, we have GitLab that we use for container repositories and CI CD. Um, it's, it's been a crazy <laughs> year. We've been updating a whole lot of stuff, um, but it's been a really cool way for us to actually implement all of the cool stuff that we tell other people to do. We also have a whole bunch of new sandboxes that I'd like to show off. Um, these are just a few of them. Um, so we have brand new sandboxes like the multi-domain sandbox that combines a whole bunch of different types of Cisco technologies in one mega sandbox. Um, so it's got ACI, it's got SD-WAN, Action Orchestrator, all to simulate what an actual environment would look like. Um, we also have some old sandboxes that we've updated. For instance, SD-WAN, um, we've updated to the new 19.2. So we've got a whole bunch of new sandboxes for you all to go and check out and play with. Um, we cover all kinds of technology, so from IoT with Cisco Edge Intelligence to networking with Cisco Modeling Labs. Um, these are just a few of our sandboxes. We have a whole bunch more, so you should totally go check them out. So now I want to go in and do a little spotlight, um, because one of the other things we've been working on the past year is getting code repos and code exchange that work with our sandboxes. Um, so I'd like to go through and feature a couple of these. So the first one I want to take a look at is Cisco SD-WAN. So this is a sandbox that we've had for a little while, but it's been updated to the most recent version. Um, you can see that we now have Cisco Modeling Labs and a dev box in this sandbox, and there's a lot of stuff going on here. There are a whole bunch of devices within this topology, um, and you have access to these via credentials for most of the devices. Um, so you can ask, access most of them over SSH, but right now we're going to look at the HTTPS interface for vManage. So this is the SD-WAN uh, dashboard. And we can see that we have a whole bunch of traffic coming in down here because we've actually got scripts um, running on our devices that mimic what an actual network would look like. Um, we also have our sandbox covers ac <laughs> across the world. We have in um, Ireland and in California. And you can also see a list of all of the devices here in the sandbox. So this is really cool. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but how do you get started with coding it? Well, I found a repository in Code Exchange. Um, this one is going to allow me to use APIs to manage application aware routing policies. So I've got a terminal booted up here. We'll go ahead and clone down this Git repository. And once we'll, we do that, we have to set up the Python environment and actually so that we can actually like run the code. Um, I'm doing all of this in Visual Studio Code because this is a really nice way to actually be able to see all of the files and have a nice terminal. So we can see that I've cloned down my repository. We'll go ahead and get a Python virtual environment set up. Um, I have Python 2 installed by default, 
And it's just easier to manage if we put all this in a virtual environment. Um, and then we can go ahead and install all of the requirements for this. Once I activate the, um, the virtual environment, we'll go ahead and pull all of my requirements. So these are all, this is all, as you can see, this is all out of the box from, uh, from code exchange. I don't have to do really anything. All of the commands I need are right here. Installing a whole bunch of stuff. Um, and we can see this sandbox is actually made to work with the, the like this, so this code repository is made to actually work with the sandbox. So if I check the vManage login, we can see it's already set up to go directly to my sandbox. I don't have to make any changes to the credentials here. And looks like the repository, all of my requirements are done. Um, we're gonna be looking at this getting stats. Um, so this should give us the same information that we were able to see in the dashboard, but using Python libraries instead. So I have all of the code for this that I've just gotten from Git. Um, so this is a great place if I'm trying to learn for the first time how to use these APIs, I have this entire repository that I can use to start building off of. So let's go ahead and let's run this script. So we're gonna be running a script that will get these statistics that are being shown between different devices. So for this, I need to enter a couple of IP addresses. Those are gonna come from my vManage dashboard. So I can go ahead and punch these in here. We'll do from the uh, central to the, a couple of the edge nodes. So we'll go for these two. And we can see that I have all of the information that is displayed in the dashboard right here. Um, so these are all gotten over REST APIs. So all of the code used to like pull, like to make the REST recall, the, the REST requests um, to format everything is all available for me to play around with so I can see what somebody else has done. And then I can even use this as a starting point for my own repositories and for my own projects. So we can do this for a, like any of the, the nodes that I wanna check. We can see all of the different traffic that's come between them. So if we look now, we'll do between the, the DC and another one of the edge nodes. And there we go. We have all of the, the statistics that I can get through the dashboard. I'm also able to access via the REST APIs. And I can see everything that's going on because I was able to clone the code repo for free from Code Exchange. So all of this has been pre-written for me and I can go through and make modifications if I need to. Um, and this is just a really good learning resource because this can be an overwhelming thing when you're first looking at it. There's a lot going on in this sandbox. So that was the first demo that I wanted to show. Um, so the next one is, I also wanted to show off Cisco Modeling Labs. This is a relatively new sandbox that we've put together. Um, Cisco Modeling Labs is something we use pretty extensively when planning our data center move, um, and it's a really powerful tool. So I wanted to show off how easy it is to get started with Cisco, with the, the sandbox and code exchange. So here I have my Cisco Modeling Labs reservation. Um, this one is a lot simpler than the other one. This just has Cisco modeling labs and a def box. It comes with a topology already preloaded, but you're able to load your own as well. So this is the Cisco modeling labs UI. So we can see I've already got my topology. This one comes with a lab. It's already started. Um, but what do we do? Like, how do I, I don't know how to use this one over code like via the REST APIs. So I went to Code Exchange and I found another repo. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and clone this one as well. Um, we'll pull all of the code from GitHub and then we'll have to go set up the environment for this one as well. These are all using Python virtual environments because otherwise the dependencies get really, really messy. So we'll start my virtual environment and then go and install a whole bunch of uh, requirements for this guy too.
All right, so while those are installing, um, we can see that there's gonna be a text file that has all of my credentials. Um, I have to get into the right directory first, and then we will see that there's a text file with all of my credentials in them. Um, and we'll be able to see right now, those are all generic values. I don't have any specific information here. So we'll go ahead, we'll have to put in the correct credentials for my sandbox, uh, which I can pull straight from the sandbox page. And so I got my, my address, my username, and my password. Got to make sure you type that password right. Passwords are really hard. All right, there we go. And we can double check and make sure that my, my credentials match up what they should be, and they do. So let's go ahead. There's a few scripts in this repository. Let's go ahead and run hellocml.py. This should theoretically pull a list of all of the labs that I have currently. And we can see that it pulls back a single lab because that's all I've got installed right now. So if we look, there's a few other scripts. There's even a test topology in here. So let's go ahead and import that test topology to see what that does. We'll call it create demo. Um, and my response is 200, so it looks like it worked. So now if I run hello CML again, we should see that I have two labs. One of them is only defined on core. Um, the other one, that's the one that I just made. And we can see that that's also reflected in my, cre like in my CML UI. Um, so there's a few more scripts in here. Um, we're going to run auth.py now to get a JSON web token that I can use to authenticate against the API. I'm going to pull this web token over into the Swagger definition. So Swagger gives a UI for basically all of the REST calls that we can do for CML. So I'm authenticating with my JSON web token, and then we're going to drop down here and find the lab ID for my lab. So I'm doing that by just getting the labs endpoint. We can see I have two IDs here. Mine is going to be the second one. So I'm going to copy that ID. And then let's go ahead and see what the state is. We've seen before that it was defined on core. So let's just verify that here. Yeah, we get defined on core as my response body. So now let's go ahead and start my lab via API. So I'm going to paste my ID in here and execute this endpoint. And we can see that it was successful. So now if I go and I check the state, we should see that my state is now started, which it is, meaning that everything worked. Um, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll go ahead and just clean up the lab before we're done here. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this lab using the, the stop endpoint. And we can see here, before I go and stop it, things are coming on. We can see that I've got one of those has a big green dot. Let's go ahead and stop it. And then we'll also wipe the lab so that we make sure everything is cleaned up before I run the last script, which is going to be to delete it. So we can see my lab is now stopped. Before I can delete it, I also have to go and wipe the lab so that everything is back to the presets. So we'll go ahead and we'll wipe it. Success. And we should be, if I go back to the state, we should now be back to defined on core. Um, so now let's go back to the repo and we'll run this last script, which will delete my lab. So I'll go ahead and run the script. It's going to ask me for the ID, but I've already got that in my clipboard. So we'll go ahead and execute that and we get a response 200. Now, oops, it's lab has been deleted. Um, so yeah, I was able to do all of that just using the APIs and the code that I found from code exchange. All of this is available for free for you to go and find and do yourself. Everything that I've done here, you can do as well. Um, it's super easy to get started. So if this is your first time with DevNet Sandbox, welcome. Um, we're super excited to have all of you. Um, so you can go to developer.cisco.com slash sandbox. Um, that's our homepage on the DevNet page. If you click that Get Started with Sandbox button, you'll be taken to our full catalog where you can browse 70 something different labs. Um, we span a whole range of different Cisco technologies, open source technology, and it's all available for you to use for experimentation, for personal learning, for messing around if you just don't have a dev environment that you can play with. Um, you can break stuff in ours and we'll just clean it right up and you don't have to worry about it.
You can also find all of the code repos that I featured here, as well as a whole bunch more on our code exchange page. These repos are curated, meaning that we look over them before we publish them. And they span all kinds of Cisco technologies. They provide a great place to come and learn something new or to provide a jumping off point for your own projects. So that's what we've been up to over the last year and a half at DevNet Sandbox. We've got some great new content for you all. We've got a brand new data center to help things run more smoothly. And we look forward to working with you in future. Thank you.